So I've got this this piece. It's the it's the end off of a, an old rake. Like I had a plastic rake that broke. Took the handle off and kept it because I thought I might make it into something like this. So I'm going to take this. It's already kind of beveled down a little bit, but I'm going to sand it down more, reduce that back end. I'm going to dremel this out a little bit to make the mouth open. Probably cut that at, at an angle. Uh, hopefully my my um, weight hole is going to line up with this where the uh, rake head was drilled on and you know make classic popper I've got this whole handle to play with so be able to make as many of these as i'll ever use I just want this to be cupped. It doesn't need to be like a deep hole. is going to be deep. <laughs> Ooh, man, that got deep quick. Okay, I'm going to put some lead there. I think I'm going to put some there to kind of distribute it a little bit.
if I've ever really shown how I do this. My tie, my uh, line ties, um, they're just twist ends, uh, basic stainless steel wire. I just kind of grip the middle of it, kind of bend these like so. Stick it in the chuck. This is sometimes real tricky to get right. Okay, and then I go on a nail that I have on my vise and just kind of spin this and it'll spin the two wires around each other. Just kind of stop short before, because if you keep going, this will start bending and getting wonky. And then you gotta sit there and use your pliers to straighten it out. Yeah, for my weights, I've just been using plain old split shots. Same thing I use for fishing. Nothing fancy. I don't have a uh, lead pot for melting this stuff down yet. Um, I have melted lead and made my own pyramid sinkers, but you know that's straight into a mold, and you know the blowtorch straight into the mold. This, you know, I'm not going to put a blowtorch over this to melt these in here. And I, some of these I just kind of flatten. I typically flatten these with a hammer just so that I can squeeze more in to a tighter space. So they just kind of mold in there. See, it takes up the whole cavity instead of having a round split shot with just a bunch of air around it. And they hold in there once they've been squished in. that is on there. That stuff is instant. And this is, of course, what I always want to try and avoid. But it'll sand off. Just not super easy. This is a lot tougher than the wood to sand. Sometimes I'll hit it with the file. And that'll make a little bit quicker work of it. You can also carve this stuff. If you really got a lot on there, it will carve. See how hard that is? I should try making an entire bait out of this crap sometime. That'd be interesting. It'll sink though. A bunch of mixed baking soda and micro balloons together. Hit it with some uh, super glue. Harden instantly. That'd be interesting. I'd probably have to do some carving, a lot of carving and sanding afterwards, but. <laughs> Oops, filled in my uh, hook hanger. There we go. Super glue. I use gel because uh, it sticks right to the hook, the hanger really well. Just kind of stays on there. Just kind of spread it around, get it in all those little cracks. I pretty much find that. This works better than mixing up epoxy, especially with wood. And I'll wipe the extra off with the cloth over here. Okay, here. Next. So I'm going to seal this. 
Oh no. Great. We need to go fishing. Aha. Okay, there's some stuff down there I can use. <laughs> okay, gotta get some more polyurethane. This is a thick syrup now with a candy shell coating. Uh, first, I'm gonna use my blocking pliers here to just hold on to this so that I can seal this bait. Wow, that's got an interesting wood pattern. If it weren't for the paint that I didn't get off, and of course my weight holes, that'd look pretty cool. I don't know if you can really see that on camera very well. Looks a lot better in person than it does in the viewfinder here. Let that hang and dry. So I'll paint her tomorrow. and white. All right, he's had sufficient time to dry. Took a little time out to let my daughter do a little painting and uh, things got a little out of hand, but <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Spitty. My gun is spitty. Pretty subtle. Um, it's really subtle. So that silver on a, that metallic silver on a metallic green background is really hard to see. See, if you get up close, you can see it. But farther away, it's so subtle. Okay, I'm just gonna kinda paint in this head silver solid at the top here. Just kind of where the uh, gills would be. So solid, solid, mostly the cover mistake I had there. Do this darker green on top.
And I'm just going to mix a touch of black into that green. My slightly darker top. Put this on real light because this got real dark real fast. Translucence of the scales. It's really tough to see those scales, but you get just right and you see them really well. And then another angle, you can't see them at all. I can't think of much else to do this. I like how simple it is. I don't even want to paint a gill pattern on it or a fin. I just want to keep it sleek like this. And the only thing I think I'm going to do is red mouth. I thought about a black mouth, but... I think good old classic popper red mouth is called for. Now, let's see if we can do this with the airbrush. I'm having to pull out the paintbrush. And if there's a little white, cool. I think that'll look good. Seriously, that's that's actually pretty good. I don't think it needs any more than that. All right, let's uh, put some eyes on it, clear coat it, and go popping. Of course, I touched this a lot. Something I'd go watch out for um, that I have run into many times now is when you touch this, getting oily residue from your fingers on it, and the epoxy uh, is like repelled by that. Uh, I've put the nicest coats on only to see it just open up and just go away from that area and leave a, a bare spot where there's no epoxy. You just gotta make sure not to touch it. Touch it as little as possible. And if you do, kind of maybe pat it down with a paper towel or something. So I modified my rotisserie to better handle these lipless baits. I was sick of cutting aluminum wire out of epoxy. really cold out now so now my epoxy is once again getting stiff on me I'll do this quick I kind of heated it up before I came out here but I can feel it just getting real stiff kind of tough getting it in that mouth I think I gotta thin this Yeah, look at it drip when I do that. That got it thin. My biggest concern is that mouth. Still being a popper mouth and not getting filled in with epoxy.